Let's welcome back to the show the chair of House Administration, Congressman Brian Stile, along with the Bonson Group founder. He's David Bonson, economist there. Great to see you both. Do you see how scripted this is, David? KJP reading again from a binder. President Biden caught again using a cheat sheet at a press conference with a pre vetted pre-approved question from the L.A. Times. If he can't handle questions during a time of war and economic crisis, he's, he shouldn't run. We have 1% GDP growth, more than 14% inflation under Biden, two years of real wage declines. And he's running again? Well, I think the issue is uh, that President Biden believes he doesn't have to actually campaign to get reelected. He's hoping that the Republicans will make it easy for him. And I hope we don't. I hope that movement conservatives will not allow this. Uh, and what Art Laffer said earlier is exactly the need of the hour, economic growth. We keep talking about the economy is too hot. We need to slow it down. That's ridiculous. It is not too hot. Jobs do not create inflation. We have an inadequate production of goods and services. That's what created inflation. We need lower government spending, whether a Republican is president or a Democrat is president. We need to start spending less money and put more of the economy back into the private sector. That's it. Growth, growth growth, growth by the private sector. Yes. President Biden is changing the U.S. economy all on his own, David, with the stroke of a pen, all without congressional uh, Congress signing off. We've never seen a president do what he's doing in modern history, and he's incentivizing really bad behavior. Well, I certainly agree, Liz. I think that these executive uh, orders are totally outside the spirit of the Constitution, and I have some moral ground to stand on in saying that, because I was totally against it when the prior president was using the executive pen too often. We need to legislate through Congress. Speaker McCarthy, the colleagues that we're uh, talking to right now, passed the bill yesterday. That means the president now needs to go negotiate. And the one thing I want to say about him using the cheat sheets and having to have the questions spoon-fed to him, I don't think it looks worse on him I think it looks worst on the reporters that are giving it to him. What kind of self-respect do you have to have as a journalist to be playing that sort of accomplice role to the president? It's totally unbecoming of journalistic ethics. Yeah, and you know, there shouldn't be any scripted questions anywhere. By the way, House of Ways and Means is working on tax breaks, repealing the $600 IRS reporting for app payments like Venmo. You know, so, David, where do you come down to this? Because the government overspending is shaking the tree of the power of the U.S. dollar around the world. It's now we're looking at it's uh, the, the U.S. dollar is used in about 40 percent of international train, trade transactions. That's down from about 52 percent. And now it's looking like it's it's around 58 percent of foreign reserves. And that used to be 70 percent. Are you worried about King Dollar? No, I, I'm not. But that's not because I'm really proud of everything we're doing to defend our dollar. It's because everybody else is worse. Uh, we're, we're still the best house in a bad neighborhood, and that's not a way to defend your currency. We've had strong dollar Republican presidents like Ronald Reagan and strong dollar Democrat presidents like Bill Clinton, uh, but these weak dollar presidents have got to go. We deserve a strong currency. Uh, we're not going to lose our reserve status. I don't want to do the chicken little thing because I don't want to lose credibility later. However, it doesn't matter if we lose uh, reserve status if we forfeit economic growth. If we give up ground to other competitors, that's what I'm most fearful of, Liz. You mean China? Um, that we essentially... We're going into a low growth environment. And yes, I do mean China, but I mean plenty of other European countries, other Asian countries are more than willing to pick up in one industry here, one industry there where we refuse to compete at our best. You know, David, uh, you know, getting back to the Biden change in the U.S. economy at the stroke of a pen, he's put a regulatory x-ray blanket in the U.S. economy. Senate GOP, the courts are moving to stop him on things like doing changes to energy uh, forcing us to buy electric cars, you know, uh, plant, uh, you know, plant output of emissions. Um, where do you see that going, David? Because that's what's really also hurting the U.S. economy. We should have more supply going into the economy in an inflationary environment. They're going the other way. 
Well, particularly with energy, see, I really believe that a good portion of the non-energy inflation that we had was related to supply chain problems, was related to the stupid COVID lockdowns, and then we reopened with inadequate supply. But with energy, this is an ongoing decision we're making to be undersupplied of an industry that, first of all, could meet our own energy needs domestically, but second of all, could export oil and gas to the world. It could become a growth engine create a lot of jobs, but be a much environmentally superior alternative. It could totally neuter the impact of Vladimir Putin. There's so many things we're leaving behind by not being an energy leader. And I absolutely blame President Biden's decisions. And I blame the overall woke ESG left that's providing the cultural basis for President Biden to continue doing this, which he knows is counterproductive to the American economy. Yeah. So now they're pushing the FTC, David, to stop using the term natural natural gas. Our climate activists argue the term natural gas gas appears overly green. Natural gas occurs naturally underground. It's responsible for why we've lowered our emissions. David, this is really Orwellian stuff. And they keep saying, you know, companies got to prove that they've offset their own emissions. Climate activists are demanding the government force companies to prove they're really net zero. But I mean, David, maybe this is too churlish. Is the government going to demand John Kerry or Al Gore or Pete Buttigieg prove what they keep saying, that they do carbon offset purchases when they fly around in private jets or use gas guzzling cars? What do you think? Well, there's certainly not. We know there's a lot of hypocrisy from these uh, outspoken green extremists. Uh, but I want to get back to your point on trying to take away the language natural gas. This is something the left has done very effectively, Liz, for over 75 years. Try to change the vocabulary instead of win the argument. Uh, you know, using the term pro-choice instead of pro-abortion. Um, Natural gas is natural and it is the greenest of the fossil fuels. It emits the least carbon and they know it. And you will not get reduced emissions without greater use of natural gas. The left needs to come to terms with that. David Bonson, that was terrific. Thanks for joining us tonight, gentlemen. It's good to see you. We'll have you back on again soon.